So today's lesson plan is going to be on the DC motor. Now it's a very interesting concept and uh, a little complicated to follow, but bear with me. I'm going to be blocking some of the words that are on the, uh, on the display here, but uh, we're going to focus on the diagram, which is going to be to my left hand side. So let's dive right in. This is a very simplistic DC motor. We've got a north magnet and a south magnet, so a magnetic field is actually created. We have one coil of wire with just one turn, so to speak, one turn here for wire connected to a battery. The battery goes through something called a commutator, which are these little bars that you see over here, these little rings. And the two black things around the ring which connects the wire to the commutator is a brush. So basically what happens here is that as those brass rings which are connected to the wire turn, the brushes make contact. These black brushes make contact. At some point you're going to see <clears throat> as part of this discussion that the black brush will eventually, the, sorry, the commutator will eventually turn to the point where the black brush does not make any contact at all and we'll come to that in just a moment. Now before we dive into it, remember the lesson from Fleming's rule, especially the left hand rule for Fleming which applies to two motors, DC or an AC motor. Now we have it over here and basically what we have is all three fingers, just as a very quick review, all three fingers are orthogonal to each other meaning that they are 90 degrees. So you have the index finger which points in the direction of the field, you have the current which is the middle finger, and you have motion, the direction is going to move in, which is in the upward direction. Now, we have a battery here, we have one turn of a coil, only one turn, we have current flowing from the positive side of the battery to the commutator, to the brush, to the commutator which is connected to the wire and you can see that the current flowing is in green and the current flows like this to this side and comes to this side over here and comes back to the negative terminal of the battery. Right? Everything is clear so far. Now, in a DC motor, what basically happens is that it is this coil, this one turn coil that is going to be turning. And it's going to turn because of the force exerted on the coil based on Fleming's rule. Now, so what's going to happen over here? The current is going to flow like this and you can see that the current is coming in this direction on the red portion of the, uh, of the turn, of the coil, you have the magnetic field going in this direction. So we're going to use Fleming's rule. Now, I'm going to turn the hand a little bit in this direction. So you're going to see that the magnetic field, these lines are flowing this way, the current is flowing like this, so to speak, coming out of the page, as shown here and the force that's going to act on the wire will be in the up direction. This causes this turn, this loop, to basically turn like this. And that's what's happening to this coil. So it begins to turn like this and eventually it becomes perpendicular to the magnetic field that's running. Notice that the brush that are connected to the commutator rings, the commutator rings are also turning and eventually what happens is that you see that the commutator rings are split, are cut in the middle. When this wire fully turns up to the top, the brush on both sides actually make no connection anymore and no current flows. It's an important point to understand because the reason why the commutators are cut is because we want to reverse the direction of the current flow. 
and you'll see that in a moment. Notice that the current is flowing on the red portion of the wire in this direction. Now, let's say, for argument's sake, that the commutator now has turned and this brush is now touching this portion of the commutator because this portion of the commutator has turned completely. And you'll see that in the simulation where it becomes very clear what is happening. Now, the current now on the red branch begins to flow in that direction, in the opposite direction it's flowing right now, when this wire has been turned completely with the commutator rings. So what now happens is that the current is now flowing in the red wire, which is like this, in this direction. So once again, we start off with Fleming's rule. We say, okay, where's the magnetic field? The magnetic field is in this direction, so this finger must now point there. And the current is actually flowing in that direction. So if you notice, the current is flowing in that direction, the magnetic field is in this direction, and the force is pointing down. So that red portion of the wire, which has turned already, will continue turning in that direction and go all the way down. That's how this one-turn coil begins to turn in the magnetic field exerted by these two magnets and the current that's flowing through it. So just think about this conceptually. There's a force exerted based on Fleming's rule in this direction when it first starts causing this red wire to turn like this. It gets to the point where there's no current flowing because the brushes make no contact with the commutator rings at that point. At that point, the current is zero. No forces are acting on it at all. Now, why does it continue to turn? That's a very good question. And it continues to turn because of inertia. The wires actually start to turn with some inertia and continue to turn. And the moment they continue to turn, they pass this, the commutator passes its open point, the brushes make a contact with the other commutator, and the current starts to flow in that direction, in the red wire. And the force continues to act, based on Fleming's rule, continues to act and forces that coil to continue turning. And the process just repeats itself and the coil starts to spin like this in this field, in this magnetic field. And that's essentially how a DC motor works. A little complicated, a little difficult to understand, but I assure you when you watch the simulation of this, it becomes crystal clear. Now, we're going to do a little bit further analysis. I'm going to jump to the actual diagram that you see in terms of the flow. So now I'm, I'm over here. Now, now watch basically what happens with the force that is being exerted. So at this point, at the 90 degree point here, and I'm going to start at this point to show this properly, and I'm going to jump back to the previous slide. What you see over here is that when this coil is in the same direction as the field, that is the point where the force is the greatest, the maximum force that is exerted on the coil. Now, that's at this point. Now, as it continues to turn, remember I told you, eventually the commutator rings the brushes don't make contact with the commutator rings, no current flows, and that's at this point over here where the force is zero. As it continues to turn some more, you're going to see this starting to rise. So when I say it continues to turn some more, I want you to go back to this again and imagine this one-turn coil is now past the point where it has turned like this and the red wire is in place of the blue wire. At this point in time, the force is beginning to increase on the, on the coil. And that's what we're seeing here. The force is starting to increase till it gets to this point. 
and the force then goes to the force here is then at its maximum now where is it at the maximum if you go back to this diagram the force is at the maximum when this red part of the turn has completely turned and is in this direction parallel to the magnetic field it is at that point it is the maximum force that's exerted so it continues to turn if it's continuing to turn it is now the force is now decreasing and eventually the force goes to zero when the commutative rings go to zero now remember I start off with 90 degrees because I want to start off with a maximum force as the commutator continues to turn to go back to its initial starting point the force begins to increase again so in other words now this red wire has turned like this all the way down to over here and now this red wire continues to turn to get to its maximum point and the maximum point is when this coil is parallel to the magnetic field and that's what we see here at this particular point when it goes here so this in a nutshell is how a DC motor works now when we talk about an AC generator you're also going to get introduced very quickly to a concept of an AC motor because in your home for example um, a fan actually works on the principle of an AC motor as opposed to a DC motor and very quickly the difference between an AC motor and a DC motor is that you don't have this split in the in the uh, in the commutator you actually have two commutators one that's connected here like this and the other one that's connected here so you have two commutators as opposed to a split ring commutator but we'll discuss that in more detail when we come to the AC generator this is how a DC motor works So now we're going to be watching a very interesting simulation on motors and you'll see from the simulation how the forces are exerted on the coil that causes the coil to actually turn. Uh, we'll be using Fleming's left hand rule for a motor when we're talking about this. I want to stop the uh, simulation here to explain some of the concepts. Um, we have two magnets over here. Um, this is the north pole, that's the south pole. Uh, you have feed lines shown by green going from the North Pole to the South Pole. You also have here uh, a coil which is actually colored blue on one side and red on the other side. The coil actually makes a connection, the blue coil makes a connection to the positive terminal of the battery through something called the commutator rings. Uh, the red coil makes a connection to the negative terminal of the battery also through the commutator rings. Now the way it's shown here in the simulation um, the commutator rings don't turn but the actual wires turn and the reason for it is because we want to show at the exact point at which we are not making a contact the wires here don't make a contact with the battery at all okay but in reality the commutator rings themselves are perfectly fixed to the wire and the commutator rings are turning and the brush here on the side does not make the contact but I just want you to understand this for the simulation we've kept the commutator rings fixed and we basically have the wires rotating inside the commutator rings it's the same concept, same principles, right? Now you can see that the current is flowing in this direction through the blue wire and it's coming out this way back to the negative terminal of the battery. Also you can see that the white circles that you see there are the magnetic fields being generated as a result of the current flow. So the magnetic field generated would be in this direction, okay? Now, rather than trying to analyze all this from basic principles, we can use Fleming's rule. And we'll talk about Fleming's rule here, which is the left-hand rule for motors that tells you in what direction the coil must turn, uh, given the current flowing through a coil and the magnetic field that is present here, it'll give you the direction of movement of the coil. You can see here now, as the coil is turning, and you can see that the commutator rings are split, at some point, 
and I'll show that to you in just a moment, you will actually see that there's no connection to the, to the coil at all from the battery. The battery basically gets disconnected from the circuit. Right now you can still see the current is flowing in that direction. But if you advance it just a little bit more, at this particular point, there is no current flowing at all. There's no connection between the wires, the commutator rings, and the battery. Now, at this particular point in time, you can see since no current is flowing through the coils, no force is exerted on the coil. So, a very important concept comes into play called inertia. Because of the inertia of the movement of the coil, the coil continues to turn. And now when it continues to turn, this red wire actually makes contact with this side of the uh, commutator rings. Meaning that this gets connected to the positive side, and you can see the direction of the current now flows in the opposite direction. So now the current flows with the red wire in that direction. Before it was flowing in this direction back this way. Now when it makes a turn completely, it starts to flow in that direction as we will see shortly. So now you can see that the current is now flowing in this direction back again. Now the red wire, basically the red portion of the wire has basically changed the direction of the current. The current still flows from the positive terminal to the, in, this, in this manner, but before this coil was on the other side and therefore the, the current was flowing this way. Now the current is flowing the other way into the coil. Okay, very important to understand the direction of the current flow. And this is why the rings are split to be able to create that change in the current flow. Now we come to the basic concept of Fleming's rule. Remember, the Fleming's rule is based on the fact that the the three fingers are orthogonal, meaning they are right angles to each other. The index finger points in the direction of the magnetic field. The middle finger points in the direction of the current. And the force exerted is pointing to by the direction of the thumb. All right? Now, we're going to take this and we're going to apply it to the motor. Now, I want to show you a few things over here. This coil is actually now rotating, and as it rotates, we're going to be able to show you the force that is being exerted by, this, uh, by, the, uh, by the magnetic fields on the coil, which causes the coil to rotate. So now, if you notice that the current is actually flowing in this direction, so, if the current is flowing in this direction, we want to see what is happening with the blue uh, with the red wire over here. So, let's look at this. We are going to apply now Fleming's rules. So, Fleming's rules would say, well, okay, remember, this pointed to the direction of the uh, magnetic field, okay, which is still pointing in the same direction. This points to the direction of the current, but then the current is actually in the other direction, so that's not correct. So we have to rotate it out like this. So this is the magnetic field. The current is into the page, right? Because that's the current that's flowing on this portion of the wire, the red portion over here that you see. So the force must be acting down. And that's what we're seeing. The force is actually acting down. The coil is turning clockwise, okay? And it's more obvious over here when you look at it. Again, the, um, if I look at the Fleming's rule, Magnetic field is in the right direction, current is in the wrong direction. I've got to turn it around this way, and you can see the current goes into the page. Current is flowing this way, into the page. Magnetic field is in this direction, and then the thumb is pointing to the force that's being exerted on the wire. So therefore, this continues to turn clockwise. Now, I could do the same thing over here on the blue wire. It's no different. It's the same analysis. On the blue wire, the current is flowing in this direction. It's coming out. Okay, so that's like this. Magnetic field is in this direction, so therefore the force exerted on the blue wire is on the top. So this is actually rotating in this direction. Okay? We could have done the analysis on any wire, any portion of the wire, it doesn't really matter. Now, what we're seeing over here 
is a, a graph and, and a graph against the angles uh, created by the uh, coiled wire, the single turn wire. So showing you the force exerted which is on this axis, the force exerted on this axis and the degree at which the coil is at. So when the coil is at zero degrees, meaning right this way, so this way is considered to be zero degrees, when the coil is basically vertical, it's at zero, at the force exerted on the coil is zero. Why? Because no current flows at that particular point in time. Now, what happens is that the current, as the coil continues to turn, so the coil is like this right now at this point, the coil is turning like this, and at this point the coil is like this. It is uh, horizontal to the magnetic field. At this point the force is the greatest. As it continues to turn, the force gets less and less, and eventually at this particular point, the coil will be like this. So it has made a turn all the way down to over here, and you can see the force actually of the coil is zero because there's no current flowing anymore through the, through the coil. Okay? And we'll see this in, in just a moment. As it continues to turn, the force begins to increase. So you can see that when the coil is, uh, uh, is horizontal, the force is the greatest. When the coil is vertical, the force is the lowest. Why? Because of the way the, the commutator rings are set up. And we'll, we'll see that in the, uh, in the simulation. So at these points is when no current is flowing through the, uh, through the ring, uh, through the uh, coil. Why does the coil continue to turn? It continues to turn because of inertia. Okay? So I'm just going to stop this for just a moment. I want you to watch where the coil is. So when the coil is vertical, remember with vertical being, it's right here. There's no connection to the battery anymore. When there's no connection to the battery, the force is the smallest. It's at zero. And you'll see this. When the coil comes up to zero, you will see that the forces will start to climb. And the magnitude of the force will be the largest when it actually is horiz uh, horizontal to this magnetic field. And you can see that it will start to climb. So you can see it's starting to climb. Initially it was zero at this particular point. It is now getting, the force is getting stronger and stronger as it continues to turn and it becomes horizontal to the magnetic field that's here. And that's what we're seeing. Now, at this particular point, it is now zero. No current is flowing through this wire anymore. And therefore, the force exerted when it is at this point is zero. And that's what we're seeing. The force exerted due to magnetism is now sitting at zero at 180 degrees. Now, if I continue, it will now continue to rise based on that. And again, you see that here. Now, the important point I want you to understand here is when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with uh, a motor's Fleming's rule comes into the picture. So keep in mind Fleming's rule. Now you can see that once again, it is, there's no current flowing through this coil at this point. So that's at 360 degrees. No current is flowing through the coil. No force is exerted on the coil. So you might, you might ask yourself, why does the coil continue to turn? It continues to turn because of inertia. So the important thing to understand for a DC motor is that you're basically using Fleming's rules Fleming's left hand rule to determine the direction of the force exerted on the coil. Also remember that in a motor you have a split ring commutator. Why? Because at one point you want the current to change direction. Also note that when you are, when there's no current flowing on the, in the coil, um, there's no force exerted on the coil. If there's no force exerted on the coil, how does the coil turn? Well, it turns because of inertia. Imagine it's like this and the coil starts to turn in this way because of the inertia of the turn It will continue to turn and make contact on the other commutator ring as you saw in the simulation So keep in mind when there's no current flow and no no magnetic force exerted the uh, inertia uh, causes the coil to continue its turn remember also that when the uh, Given that the commutator rings are set up that way when the coil is vertical no force is exerted 
vertical to the magnetic field, the constant magnetic field from the, from the uh, bar magnets, then no force is exerted on the coil. When the coil is horizontal to the magnetic field, then the force is at its maximum that's exerted uh, on the coil. And those are the concepts to remember for a DC motor. And this ends the simulation.